Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, the content that we're going to talk about on this episode of the Bullet Points this morning is something that was heavily requested in the comments field for my video last night. Now, a lot of you are extremely concerned, and to be honest, rightfully so, about a new bill that was introduced in the House from a Democrat in Virginia that would basically add a 1,000% tax to AR-15s or whatever the author deems assault weapons. Okay, I'm going to lay this out the best that I can from my perspective. In my own personal opinion, this is not a direct threat that's actually realistic. This is much more of an example of Democrats throwing something against the wall and hoping that it sticks. I'm going to lay out my entire, in my entire case right now. Everything will be in the description box below if you want to check my receipts, check all my sources, and you guys in the comments field, let me know if you agree or don't agree. But this is something that we do need to address. Now, on this channel, we are constantly trying to get as much up-to-date and focused information as we can to you guys, so we'd love to have you join the fold and subscribe because we need as many in the ranks as we possibly can and make sure that bell is on so we get this information to you quickly. But with that, let me lay out my case as to why, yes, this is a threat, but I don't believe it's actually feasible or realistic. Like I said, everything linked. Let me know what you think. Let's dive into this. Buyer to propose a 1,000% tax on assault-style weapons. Okay, they're doing backdoor shenanigans. They've been doing backdoor shenanigans in every area of government consistently over and over and over again. So far, they have it hasn't worked. And I'm going to lay out some historical cases of where this exact same approach has not worked. But let's dive in. I'm going to show you what they're actually trying to do and then show you why I have questions. Representative Don Beyer, Democrat Virginia, is drafting legislation to impose a hefty tax on assault-style weapons in the wake of the situations across the United States. Of course, assault-style weapons is kind of an ambiguous term, but I'm going to show you what they're doing and who's taking part in this, because this is important. Byers' proposal would tax AR-15 model weapons and other firearms considered assault weapons according to terms set out in a separate bill from Representative David Cicilline, Democrat Rhode Island, Breyer's office, told The Hill. Now, if you've watched this video for the last week, these videos last week, you know that Cicilline is the guy from Rhode Island who said in an open hearing, Spare me the BS about your constitutional rights. Oh, that's fitting. Anyway, let's keep going. Buyer's proposal would impose a 1,000% tax on the weapons for manufacturers, producers, and importers. The bill would exempt government entities like law enforcement, federal, state, and local levels, as well as military. So it would wipe out the entire Second Amendment industry and Second Amendment ownership, which is their intended target. That's the reason they put this up. However... This does not have the same chances as the Senate negotiations, all the things that are going on in the background. In my personal opinion, this is very loud, very scary noise. Let me show you. I'm going to lay out my case. Because here's what, here's what they're thinking. Gun control legislation would have to meet a 60-vote threshold to overcome a filibuster in the Senate, making passage highly unlikely even if all 50 Democrats are united. However, a tax would be more likely to be allowed to move through the budget reconciliation, which would only require 50 votes to pass. Now, they're stuck on the filibuster, so they're trying to go through the reconciliation. That's a budgetary process. Again, requires only a simple majority of 50 people. The reason that this will not work is because budgetary processes are, are basically confined to budgetary items through something called the bird rule. And that's what I'll walk you through right now. This is incredibly important, but this is their perspective. And they give it away right here. Quote, taxes get more deference in budget reconciliation than other policies from a parliamentarian point of view. Zach Moeller, director of Third Way's economic program, told Business Insider. And that gives it away, the parliamentarian, because the parliamentarian is the person who does all the rules. Check this out. Summary of the Bird Rule. Under the Bird Rule, the Senate is prohibited from considering extraneous matter as part of the reconciliation bill or resolution or conference report thereon. The definition of what considers extraneous is laid out in the Budget Act. The Byrd Rule is enforced when a senator raises a point of order during consideration of a reconciliation bill or conference report. If the point of order is sustained, the offending title, provision, or amendment is deemed stricken unless its proponent can muster a three-fifths or 60 Senate majority vote to waive the rule. So basically, one Republican senator says, uh, this is not budgetary, I'm invoking the Byrd Rule, and they have to come up with that magic number of 60 senators again. It's the filibuster a different way. The reason this is important is that bird rule stopped them with immigration sliding into the Build Back Better plan. That's the historical precedent I'm going to cite for you. Check this out. This is from a year ago. Democrats fall short in third attempt to get immigration in Build Back Better bill. 
Hmm, that sounds familiar. They, this is not a new game for them. Washington. Senate Democrats were informed Thursday that immigration provisions are ineligible for inclusion in President Joe Biden's Build Back Better Act, marking the third time their efforts have fallen short. And the reason that I bring that up as an example is this is something that they tried with immigration, failed miserably. Three times. The Senate parliamentarian who does all the rules in the Senate said, uh, this is not budgetary. This doesn't fall into reconciliation. Stop it. They're consistently trying to bend and break the rules because Democratic motto, at least as of late, is if you don't like the rules, just change them. And the hard, fa hard fact is, this is not going to work in the Senate, which is why I'm bringing it to you. This is an important thing to understand that even though they try, try as they might, they're still running into the, the Senate procedural rules that are blocking them. And that's why we're going to continue to focus on where things that actually could go somewhere are happening. And that's what we're doing on this channel. Let me know what you guys think in the comments field below, and I'll see you tonight at the 9 p.m. segment. I'm Braden. See you later.